closer look at some of the issues that we've been discussing here today. This morning we had the health summit. Now, among one of the topics that were discussed was, of course, the cost of health care. Who's joining us in studio today, Zawadi? And um, what, what are your thoughts towards this? This is such a big problem in our country. What do you think? Well, thank you very much, Maya. In fact, you, you broke it down uh, very nicely. And I believe the panel uh, of uh, gentlemen that we have today, that are experts in their various fields, are going to help demystify these issues. Uh, right uh, on my left is uh, Musundi uh, Jofinas, who is the chairman of uh, the Kenya National Union of Nurses. We have uh, right after him, uh, that is Dr. Timothy Olueni, and that is the Secretary General of the Kenya Association of Private Hospitals. And of course, uh, the man himself, we've been talking about uh, the Acting Chief Executive Officer of the National Health Insurance Fund, which is NHIF, and that is no other than Geoffrey Mwangi. Now, Geoffrey, I think I should begin with you and uh, just to introduce you to the discussion Maya was just putting across. <coughs> and the perception, or at least the experience we've had so far, is that the cost of living, uh, not really living, but the cost of uh, healthcare is very expensive. And it's mostly unaffordable to majority of Kenyans who deserve it. Is it overpriced? Uh, one, thank you, <coughs> K24 and uh, viewers, uh, for this moment. One, maybe it's just to demystify a bit of the statistics given. Uh, you realize one thing, our membership is growing. Uh, maybe by then we got 5.2, now we are 6.1. Mm -hmm. uh, impressive. And uh, uh, the other aspect is we have two schemes we run. We have the civil servant schemes, we have the national scheme. Some of the benefits uh, given there were for the civil servant scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are we doing about the national scheme, which is the most important scheme to run? Uh, we have uh, introduced uh, surgical packages, which will go a long way to alleviate the burden that uh, most Kenyans are feeling mm -hmm. in regarding to cost. <clears throat> One thing to point out, uh, matters dealing with cost of health care they are global and uh, uh, they uh, enjoy the broader economic aspects of any nation. And uh, uh, it takes uh, a combination of the providers and the insurers to break this myth about what exactly should people people pay mm -hmm. for health care. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe I, I should just cut you short uh, to allow a reaction uh, from uh, Dr. Lueni. Uh, you, you, you heard what he said, and I'm just wondering, we have so many, uh, so much disparities on uh, services that are rendered between, uh, if you compare public and private hospitals. It is the same service, but you can pay 10 times as much in a private hospital. Why do we have this disparity? Well, I'd like to say that the disparities that are there in, within our healthcare system, and especially with respect to cost, uh, the drivers of cost in the different, both the public and the private sector are totally different. And if, if I was to summarize in terms of the drivers of cost, it's going to be consumer behavior, it's mm -hmm. going to be the inputs we have, whether it's human resource, whether it's other, other inputs like, for example, medical supplies, the human resource I've mentioned, and then technological advancement, mm -hmm. which has also driven up costs. Now, when I talk about consumer behavior, I'm referring to in the global marketplace, and especially with the things that have driven globalization in terms of healthcare, you will find that in the age of internet and social media, the market has tended to become more consumer driven as opposed to demand driven. Mm -hmm. People are more aware in terms of what, what treatments are available for medical conditions and that drives up cost. So the issue of cost of healthcare is a bit more complex mm -hmm. and I think for us to be able to get to, to the root cause of the cost of healthcare, we have to address all of them in tandem. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, thank you for that uh, reaction. And, and of course, uh, we've just been thinking about when we return, we'll have this discussion uh, a little deeper and of course, there's been a debate on whether or not uh, the action to devolve healthcare has helped in bringing down the cost or making it even more expensive. Don't go too far. Welcome back. You're watching K24 Evening Edition. My name is Zadim Dibo, and we're having a discussion on the cost of healthcare. Remember, if you can talk to us, please do on our Twitter handle at K24TV. 
The hashtag is cost of healthcare. You can also hit us up on our Facebook page, that is K24. And the gentleman with me in studio is uh, to my immediate left, that is uh, Musundi Jofinas, who is the chairman of the Kenya National Union of Nurses. We have Dr. Timothy Olweni, the Secretary General of the Kenya Association of Private Hospitals. And of course, uh, Geoffrey Mwangi, who is the acting chief executive officer of the National Health Insurance Fund and HIF. And again, um, I, I'd like to talk to you more, uh, uh, Geoffrey. Talk to us about uh, the cases that we experienced early in the year when uh, I think sometimes last year we got forms, subscription forms across Kenya uh, to be able to subscribe to certain outpatient services. But we still feel, and, and I think that is the feeling of majority of Kenyans, that this cover is not yet sufficient. Yes, that is about an outpatient. And why choice of facility, as we commonly call it, is because of the model we are running, which is capitation model. Uh, we have various ways and modes you can pay uh, for uh, health care. You can compensate health providers for their services. And if you are in an environment, especially whereby you are not able to control costs, you have to choose appropriately which model you apply. Mm -hmm. And that's why we came up with the capitation model, mm -hmm. which guarantees two things in one, that uh, you as a consumer of health services, you'll be able to know up, up hand who is your provider. And uh, we'll be able to channel the resources to your provider and you'll be able to access health services, on, on, uh, that is primary health services, when you need them from your provider. Uh, if you are not uh, 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 guaranteed of the quality, you can choose uh, 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 another preferred provider. And what happens? Me as a provider, I would want people to keep choosing me. So what do I do? I have to up my game and keep the quality good. So uh, that way, me as an insurer, I'm guaranteed about my risks, I know how much it is on the outlay that mm -hmm. I need to spend about. Mm -hmm. uh, so, which is why I want to bring in uh, Dr. Lweni. From where you sit, it, it seems to Kenyans that if you have money, you can access healthcare, you have a guarantee to life, so to speak. You can fly out of the country anytime if you're not satisfied with what is in the country. If you're poor, you cannot guarantee your survival it more or less feels like you're condemned to die. So then we want to understand what can we do as a nation to try and make this cost very friendly to the list of persons, as we may put it. I think it may not necessarily be an issue of limiting the cost. I think the healthcare fin financing mechanisms is what needs to change. Mm -hmm. We have to move more towards pooling mechanisms and avoid out-of-pocket expenditure for medical care. And that's why some of the initiatives, like what is run by NHIF, is a social ins health insurance scheme that tends to, wants to pool resources. The same thing with public, uh, pri private health insurance, another pooling mechanism. And in addition to that, funding through the exchequer is another mechanism. Mm -hmm. So what we want to move people away from is out-of-pocket expenditure because that exposes people to what they refer to as catastrophic health expenditure. So it is more the financing mechanisms that need to change, and that's why this initiative is good. Now, talking about the aspect of capitation in terms of healthcare providers, I understand, we understand fully the need that there was in terms of changing the manner in which healthcare providers are compensated from mm -hmm. a more traditional fee for service moving on to a capitation model. Mm -hmm. But one of the challenges that we have is, regardless of the financing of the compensation mechanism, mm -hmm. it has to be adequate. Mm -hmm. And as private hospitals, uh, NHIF is aware that we were not in agreement in terms of the degree of compensation and that has affected the aspect of penetration of the schemes because a lot of providers have shied away from it. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a challenge but uh, in, I hope in summary I've answered your question. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so then uh, let me just uh, bring you uh, Jofinas. When you're looking, we, we, of course we'll finish up with uh, uh, Mr. Mwangi. If I may just comment on the aspect of uh, <coughs> industrial unrest that is being experienced in the health sector. It doesn't go well for a healthcare system. Mm -hmm. It, it da damages the confidence which the public have got in terms of our healthcare system. One of the things that we must do is we must take care of our health workers if we are really interested mm -hmm. in improving our healthcare system. A topical issue has been in the recent past about the aspect of cross-border contracting or people going for treatment overseas. Mm -hmm. But these are the reasons that are making people lose confidence in our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So it is an issue that needs to be addressed and addressed decisively if we're going to change the perception 
that our healthcare system has got the capacity to handle these conditions. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment we are losing a lot of foreign exchange and I know for example people have complained about people seeking care, especially in India. But we must address the root cause as to why our patients are leaving. The, the, the objective cannot be to be isolationist in terms of trying to block people from moving. Let us address the issues of cost, quality and access. If we address those, our people are not going to leave and seek treatment elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of us addressing those issues, mm -hmm. we'll keep having the same challenges. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Mwangi, your final yes. remarks? Uh, sure. Uh, we can continue having this debate about cost. <clears throat> but there are three key things when it comes to healthcare. We talk about affordability, we talked about accessibility, we talk about uh, uh, the quality uh, you, you, you get. Uh, for affordability, we want to encourage uh, more Kenyans to enroll in an insurance scheme because indeed that's what you need to sort you out whenever you have any special catastrophic conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at about uh, 12 uh, million Kenyans uh, from the informal sector who may not have one form of insurance or the other. And uh, if we are able to close this gap, then we will uh, see actually the dream of universal health coverage is here with us. So for us and um, uh, you, the media, is to assist us and try to drum up this debate that we need uh, people to enroll in any mode of health uh, insurance. Uh, that's what will take us forward. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your invaluable remarks, and we hope uh, this discussion will keep on. Uh, keep talking to us on our social media platforms. That is, uh, the hashtag is Cost of Healthcare. We can also get your comments if you hit us up on our Facebook page, K24 TV, and of course our Twitter handle at K24 TV. Now, that brings us to the end of this discussion. And we now uh, wind it up to introduce business news. Let's take that short break and we'll be back with the news.